Now then, oh, that was very Yorkshire, wasn't it? Hi, my name is uh, Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And uh, on this particular video, the workshop task video, we're going to be taking a look at um, wheel cylinders as part of the brake system on most cars. Now, obviously, modern cars tend to have disc brakes front and rear, but there's still plenty of cars out there and like commercial vehicles that still run drum brakes, hydraulic drum brakes on the rear. And we've had an old 1994 Ford Laser 1.3 litre um, wonderful machine uh, that's come into the workshops with the driver's side rear wheel cylinder has started to leak with the telltale sign of brake fluid dribbling out the bottom of the brake drum. Um, I'm hoping, although it's very rare, I'm hoping that the brake fluid hasn't got on the brake shoes. Um, we're going to have to strip the wheel off, take the drum off, have a look see inside, take all the brake shoes out of the way, remove the wheel cylinder and then pop down to the local parts suppliers. Um, auto stop I think we're going to go to today. Uh, one of my ex-students, Nathan, works there and he's going to sort us out with a pair of wheel cylinders. It's, um, it's standard workshop practice to replace both sides at the same time. Um, usually when one starts to leak, the other one isn't very far away from failing as well. Uh, and for the cost of the part, it's, um, and the fact you've got to bleed the brakes up anyway, you may as well just change the other side at the same time. If you've got to buy brake shoes, you get brake shoes for both sides in one box. That's how they come as a set. So the, the additional cost to the customer is, is negligible. Whereas if you don't do it, then you've got the whole job to do all over again, then it can get pretty pricey by the time you price the whole thing up for both jobs. So we're going to go outside. Uh, it's a glorious day. I'm not in the workshops. We're actually outside under the canopy again, which is a much nicer place to work. We're going to jack the vehicle up, get the driver's side rear wheel off, drum off, see what's going on. Get one of the wheel cylinders off today. Uh, so th this video is going to cover the strip down. Now you'll often find, uh, once you remove the wheel, you can see the brake drum here, there's a couple of retaining uh, screws, machine screws, and you'll probably notice some, self, uh, some center punch marks on those screws. And that's the traditional way of locking them on once you tighten them up. So to get them out, essentially, just pop your center punch on there, give them a little tap, and that should, Free them off. That's the plan. There we go. Okay. Pretty easy job. Okay. So don't try to undo them straight away with a screwdriver. Chances are you'll break your screwdriver and you'll need to go and buy a new one. Okay. Now, to get the actual drum off, the drum is what's called hub mounted on these, which means that the hole in the middle of the drum is, an, is a tight fit onto the hub itself. And that's what centralizes the drum. It's not the stud, the wheel studs, it's the actual um, shoulder on the hub. So to get them off, you've got to give them a bit of a tap. And if you use a magic hammer, that's what I call it, a copper, copper end and a hide end, these are really useful for this kind of stuff. It's not going to damage the drum. Uh, you're also not going to fire bits of rust all over the place because it's quite a, a soft metal. There we go. Yeah, okay. So, as you can see, there's brake fluid all over the shoes on this, uh, on this uh, drum brake. So the brake fluid has contaminated the linings of the brake shoes. It's also, because this is cast iron, the brake fluid has got into the metal. So we're not only gonna have to clean that off with brake cleaner, we're gonna have to warm that drum up with a blowtorch and physically burn off the liquid that's inside the pores of the cast iron. If we don't do that, then when the drum warms up, the remaining brake fluid that's in the pores will leach out and affect the new brake shoes. 
Right, so now we're going to strip off the brake shoes and the wheel cylinder. And we're going to have to get new shoes and a pair of, uh, pair of wheel cylinders too. So, what I need to do is take a photo because that photo is going to show me the positioning of all the various springs. We've got the, the, the automatic adjuster in there as well. It's important that goes in the correct way around. So I'll take a photo first and then we'll strip it down. Okay, so we know we're going to be removing the brake wheel cylinder very shortly. What we need to do is clamp off the nearest flexi pipe brake flexi pipe that's supplying that wheel cylinder with fluid. That means that we're not going to get all the fluid drain out of the whole brake system whilst we're gone, going to go and get some parts. So you want to basically get a set of mole grips. These are obviously you should have a set of these in your kit and get a couple of large deep sockets. And now we can use that as a method of clamping the flexi hose. It's really simple, it's fully adjustable, and you've already got the kit. You don't need to go out and buy something special just to clamp the flexi hose. And it's just here. So this is the flexi hose just here that's supplying this particular wheel cylinder. And ideally we want to put the clamp as close to the to the end, the output of that flexi pipe. So I'll try and get it just down here somewhere. And we don't want to crush the pipe, that's not the idea. So you've got to adjust it up. There we go, that's perfect. Okay, so the next job now is to remove the brake shoes out of the, off the backing plate. Okay, so we've got these two little clips. And they just retain the shoes onto the backing plate. You usually take those off first. Just pop those into the drum for now. And that gives you it more movement on the shoes so you can get the springs unhooked. I'll show you how to put the whole thing back together again once we've got the new shoes and we've, we've degreased everything because it's all in a pretty bad state at the moment and there's no way it would pass a warrant of fitness in its current state. So I've just pulled one of the shoes off the anchor at the base just here. It's still basically still in with the wheel cylinder. And we'll get that bottom spring out of the way. Now, it is really important that you have taken photos before you start this job because you need to know the orientation and which way around all these springs go, which ones go where. It may look simple when you're taking it apart. Believe me, once you've got the parts, which could be a day, two days, an hour, whatever it is, you'll have forgotten where they go. Pretty quick job, doesn't take long. Again, good idea to wear gloves, it's quite messy. Really wouldn't quite like that to come off there. There we go. Right, so we've got both shoes, we'll take those, we'll give them a clean, we'll take those with us, the part suppliers. Um, this is the automatic adjuster, that's going to remain in place for now because that's connected to the handbrake mechanism as well. So we'll, we'll leave that where it is. On the back of the wheel cylinder, we've got a bleed nipple, and this, this, um, these wheel cylinders, this car, because this one's got a bleed nipple, and the other side has got a bleed nipple, it's on a separate circuit. This car has got diagonally split brakes. Remember, we talked about that um, in the master cylinder um, video. So anyway, the master cylinder, sorry, the, uh, the wheel cylinder is retained to the backing plate by two. 10 millimeter bolts or m6 bolts and also the brake pipe is held in place again by a union that's also 10 millimeters perfect so you've got this is this is the view of the back of the wheel cylinder we've got the two mounting bolts one here and one just there look we'll remove those once we've taken the brake pipe off the, the uh, this bolt here that's your bleed nipple that's what we're going to be using later on to bleed up the brakes and that's the, the feed pipe for the hydraulic fluid. So the first thing to undo is that one there. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is about the best I can get the camera for you. You can see the wheel cylinder just there, look. And, and first of all, I'm gonna remove the bleed nipple, which is an eight mil spanner size. We'll get that out of the way and it's gonna give us more access to that, uh, to that union. 
Now, because we're now working with brake fluid, it's really important that we're wearing our eye protection. And uh, should really be wearing gloves again, but they've all ripped and I really don't have time for gloves again. So it's a case of do as I say, not as I do. It's quite often lecturers are like that. Okay, so we remove the bleed nipple. There's not, there isn't a great flood of fluid coming out because I've already clamped the flexi pipe. Now it's important we get this spanner on just the right place. We don't want to round that bolt off. There we go, look. It's quite fortunate. If it had rounded off, I'd have just made up a new uh, steel pipe. It's only a short one. Get that taken off. Came off pretty easy actually. Right, so that's the, uh, the the hydraulic pipe now disconnected. You can see a bit of fluid just leaking down. That's just coming out of the wheel cylinder as we speak. And now we've just got a couple of mount bolts to to free off. And then we're going to be able to get the wheel cylinder taken off the backing plate. And again, we'll just give it a clean. The parts guys hate it when you take them stuff that's covered in oil. It'll just cover their bench in oil as well. So we'll give it a bit of a clean, give them some respect. Do the same with the brake shoes. And then we can head off to the parts. This is uh, going to be a cheap repair. It's one of the customers. He just wants to get it back on the road for his daughter. She's learning to drive. And you don't want to be giving someone that's learning to drive anything with any real value because they, they're going to crash it. Anything on my kids, they'll crash it. Okay, so one wheel cylinder has now been removed from the brake, the drum brake backing plate, that's what we call this piece here. Uh, we've also removed, first of all, the brake shoes. I'm going to take those into the workshop, give them a bit of a clean off. Yeah, okay, they're scrap, but I want them to be clean for the I take to the parts guy. I don't want to cover his hands in grease and, and brake fluid, it's not really fair on them. So as of now, we've finished on the car. We don't need to strip both sides, we know what's on the other side. We know we're going to buy two wheel cylinders, and we know we're going to get two pairs of brake shoes in the kit that's supplied. So we can strip the other side down later on when we come to just do the install. Okay, so we're back in the workshop and we're just gonna um, clean up all the various components. And whilst we're doing that, I'm gonna show you the internals of the wheel cylinder and what each component does. It's scrap, it's gonna go in the bin. So let's use this one rather than show you a new one. Um, so first of all, the brake drum. Now on the brake drum, you'll see on the outside, it says usually anyway, maximum diameter. And um, in the casting is the number. This is 201.5 millimeters. That means that you need to measure across here, across the largest, well, across the diameter basically. And if that's more than 205 point, sorry, 201.5 millimeters, or anything close to be fair, anything more than 201, and I would replace this. Now you need to remember you must measure where the actual brake shoe makes contact. Don't measure on the lip. There's normally a little couple of mil lip right on the edge just here. Don't measure that. That's going to be the original spec usually. Um, these things wear really quick if the brake shoes have been allowed to go down to metal uh, and they usually require replacing. Is it worthwhile getting them skimmed? No, not really. They're pretty cheap nowadays. You just go and buy new ones. Now, a quick tip before, the, before we move on to the wheel cylinder. With the brake shoes themselves, if there's any kind of contamination on the on the actual brake linings, and the same goes for brake pads as well, that contamination could be oil or it could be brake fluid. Once it's got into that material, you will not get it out. Sure, there's old wives' tales about putting them in the oven and turning them up to full heat and eventually the, the, the residue will drip out of the, the lining. Nah, it doesn't work. Once it's in there, it's like a sponge, it soaks it up and it stays in there. The only way to fix this, this job uh, fix the fault is to buy brand new brake shoes. So we're going to clean those up so we can take them down to the shop and get them matched up. Now the wheel cylinder. 
again um, traditionally years ago like with the mass cylinders you could hone these you could take all the bits and pieces out and we'll do that in a second and you could actually hone the bore just like you do with a cylinder on an engine uh, obviously using a smaller tool and then you'd buy seal kits and you'd put new seals in there and you'd refit the old units with new seals and honed to the car and bleed it up and away you go again uh, it's not recommended anymore you're far better off buying a new unit they're not expensive just buy a new one and it's going to last for ages what i tend to find is if you do hone them they tend not to last anywhere near as long plus don't forget when you hone them the bore is slightly larger uh, the lip seal the l type seals have less force sealing force against between the lip and the cylinder wall so there's more chance of them leaking so much better to buy new ones and that's what we'll be doing for this car we'll get two of these Right, I'm going to move the camera and we're going to strip this down. Okay, so this is a, a double acting or double piston wheel cylinder. It's got a piston on each end and that's what you would normally find on most brakes these days. There was the old school brakes where you had twin leading shoe where we had two separate wheel cylinders, each with one piston. But they've pretty much been superseded now by disc brakes. Okay, now the first seal here, this is a dust seal. And if you just get your little flat screwdriver and just put it underneath there. You can just take it off the retaining lip, whiz it round, and take the dust seal off. Now, just like with a caliper, that dust seal isn't designed in any way to retain the fluid. It's not there as a pressure seal. As you can see, it's full of brake fluid and rust and all sorts. That should be dry in there. It shouldn't be any kind of liquid at all. And then we can re remove the piston itself. Sometimes they're seized, sometimes they're not. This one's pretty easy to move. And... On the piston, if we just give it a bit of a clean, you'll find the main seal. Okay, it's very rusty. It's not surprising these things have failed. To be fair, this car has been parked up for about a year, hasn't really been used. And we can remove that seal. So you can just, again, a little pointy stick or a flat screwdriver, something that's not too sharp. Um, you can get it down the back of the seal. There we are, look. And then again, without stabbing yourself, just get it over the edge and then bring that round and it will just take the seal off for you. One more go. There we go. So that's an L-type seal because it's got a hole in the middle. The, the old cup seals didn't have holes in the middle. And it's the job of that uh, flange there to retain that and hold it in place. The old, the old uh, cup seals didn't have that benefit, and every now and again they would fall down and the whole thing would, would fail. So that's your piston, that's your L-type seal, and that's your dust seal. And based on how they go together, like that. And the L-type seal, one thing I didn't cover, is the actual lip of the seal here should face inwards because don't forget this is the pressure, the pressure chamber here. And it's the pressure that forces that seal out against the cylinder wall to create uh, a seal so it doesn't leak any fluid. So that goes there, there's your dust seal. And inside as well, we have a spring. And that spring's job is to make sure that both the pistons are pushed uh, and keep in contact with the brake shoes at all times. We don't want an air gap to develop between the piston and the brake shoe. If we did, then we'd get excessive pedal travel. You see that one's a bit more seized. There we go, okay. So we'll just flick that other seal off for you as well. There we go. Not being particularly careful because all this is gonna go in the bin anyway. Okay, so that spring's job there, look, if I just do that, all that sits in there, and its job is to make sure that they st these two pistons stay out uh, as far as they can uh, and in contact with the where they fit onto the brake shoe, which is like that. Okay, so we don't want an air gap. If we had an air gap, then when we apply the brake pedal, we'd get lots of travel on the brake pedal until each of these pistons all made contact with their respective brake shoes so we'd have a low pedal which is really bad it, it doesn't inspire much confidence when you're a driver when the pedals are real low 
Right, so there you go, that's the internals of a wheel cylinder. And if we were to hone this cylinder and fit new seals, then that's the bore down there that we'd be honing. And you can see there's all sorts of residue in there, look at that. That's lovely. It's a pretty, pretty bad condition. This vehicle really wants a brake fluid flush as well, so we'll be doing that when we actually reinstall the brake, uh, the new wheel cylinders and so on. Excellent, right, I'm gonna clean this up, reassemble it so that the guy at the parts shop has got something to, to look at so he can select the correct parts for us. Okay, we'll continue this once we have the parts in hand. Okay, so we're about finished, in all honesty, for the video. Get rid of those. Um, where do we, quick summary, what do we do? Well, first of all, we got the car, got it jacked up, got the drum taken off, and we saw all the brake fluid that had leaked out of the wheel cylinder and it contaminated the drum and the shoes and everything was covered in brake fluid. Cool. Well, I hope you found this video to be informative. We've covered wheel cylinders, brake shoes, brake drums, uh, and all the clips and bits and pieces and basically how to, how to do the jobs. Now, just bear in mind that every car is different. The configuration, the style, the design of certain components can vary slightly. In fact, it can be very, very different sometimes. Um, but what we've done here is a pretty standard run-of-the-mill kind of car, which should help you to, to do your own. That's the idea, to teach you a few skills, show you what to do, not to be too scared. Okay, my name is Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. And I produce these videos primarily for my students. It helps them to see much, much more uh, real-world jobs than they get to see actually in college. Uh, and to read about and watch about. This is real stuff and no doubt they're going to get really bored of my voice at some point. But, uh, you know, as previous students have said, they find this kind of stuff really, really helpful. So I will continue to do it for as long as the students find it helpful for them. Thanks for watching. Uh, any comments, leave them down at the bottom and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers. Over and out.